In recent years, it's been a goal of tech billionaires to eventually colonize Mars. But for humans to inhabit the red planet, building a sustainable and permanent source of food is vital. After all, humans can't survive without food and water, not for relatively short periods of time, much less the long periods needed to count as civilization. Simply sending spacecrafts to provide supplies of prepackaged food will ultimately not be enough. A trip to Mars takes six to nine months itself, doubled when including the trip back. It's difficult to efficiently pack enough food to last that long much less for decades on the planet itself if a civilization is to be established. In fact, the transition in human history on Earth from hunter-gatherer societies to flourishing civilizations was marked by the agricultural revolution. We began to settle down into societies sustained by farms and agriculture instead of hunting for food. For Mars to be a viable civilization, developing workable space farms on the planet is of the utmost importance. In the movie The Martian, Mark Watney barely manages to survive on eating farm potatoes in Martian dirt in the hab, fertilized with feces. In reality, just how feasible is growing crops on Mars? There are blatant challenges posed by this mission. Unsurprisingly, growing crops in space is hard. Low gravity makes distributing water hard, deprives plant roots of oxygen, not to mention stagnant air reduces evaporations while increasing the temperature of leaves. A new study at Vahuningen University in research in the Netherlands grew 10 different crops in simulated lunar and Martian soil, which mimicked regolith, the inorganic material on the surface of of Mars covering the rock below. In contrast to soil on Earth, which Mars does not really have, regolith is crushed volcanic rock which contains zero organic materials. Of the ten plants, nine of the crops grew, with the exception of spinach. They managed to harvest edible produce from the plants, including quinoa, radishes, and tomatoes. Other researchers have been able to grow crops such as garden cress, arugula, and chives on the surface of Mars. The study concluded that seeds could also be made for radishes, garden cress, and rye. The plants must be grown indoors as they cannot grow in an indoor space environment. Watering plants is also made difficult by a lack of gravity. Instead of being absorbed by the soil, it would merely creep over the surface on Mars. In the words of Simon Gilroy, a botanist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, researching how gravity affects planet growth. According to the researchers, insect farming and cellular agriculture would contribute to feeding humankind on Mars. For the vegetables to be grown on Mars, only seeds are required to be sent from Earth, and general farming equipment. The study proved that the vegetables themselves can grow grow in the regolith on the planet. The first step in making this a reality is to conduct tests in the International Space Station with the crops and record the results, which are hopefully successful. The European Space Agency has deemed lettuce a good option to grow in space as it grows quickly, which enhances research. On the flip side, lettuce is far from the most nutritious crop, so researchers suggest growing it in tandem with a crop like beans, which has higher levels of protein and nutritional value. This is particularly important for astronauts who require maintained stamina and a balanced diet. Diet. Researchers suggest placing the plants in a centrifuge in the International Space Station in order to create some gravity for the plant to grow. Others have suggested a hydroponics system, which would forego soil, instead growing plants using a water base. But this solution comes with its own challenges. For one, hydroponic solutions do not mix as well as they do in space, compared to their earthly counterpart, as differences in density and weight do not separate cold and warm water in the same way. This means that when the roots of the lettuce extract the oxygen from the liquid-based solution, it becomes deprived of oxygen. Ordinarily, one could solve this by bubbling air through the solution, but this is impossible due to the constraints of space. Thus, the centrifuge creates a resolution to this problem by creating some gravity. This enables the astronauts to operate the system in a similar manner to it being on Earth. However, unsurprisingly again, this solution may only be of value in a smaller, controlled test setting. It may not work due to the size of the centrifuge required to operate a farm on Mars with enough crops grown to feed all of the potential occupants. Scaling up the centrifuge would create a host of engineering problems. In spite of this, this presents an exciting possible solution for growing crops, albeit not the best one. Even if it is ineffective in growing plants on Mars, it could still prove vital for enabling test runs with plants on the International Space Station. From these test experiments, we could gain insights on the data associated with partial gravity levels and the growth of different kinds of crops in space. In another study, a team of astrobiology students at Villanova College embarked on a Mars Gardens project to investigate which crops are able to grow in a material that simulates Martian soil, known as Martian Soil Simulant, MSS. The simulant is largely based on volcanic rock from the Mojave Desert, yet it is often denser. Since the program's creation in 2017, over 45 different plants have been tested, including hops and barley. These exist alongside control plants, which are exposed to the same environmental conditions and are grown in potting mix. However, Martian soil does contain a hazardous chemical, perchlorates, which pose a danger to humans, especially 
especially if inadvertently consumed. On Mars, it's essential that this chemical be removed from the soil before being used to harvest crops. Another challenge of successfully growing crops that the Villanova students found has to do with adequate sunlight. On Mars, there is less sunlight, meaning that plants may grow at a slower rate and not to their fullest potential. The Villanova project sought to replicate all the environmental conditions on Mars. So, how habitable for humans and plants is Mars exactly? Well, it's certainly not the most pleasant place to inhabit for both. In contrast to Earth, Mars is smaller, colder, and more desolate. The frigidity makes it impossible for plants to survive when exposed, as Mark Watney illustrated in The Martian when he accidentally exposed his potato farm to the Martian atmosphere, causing his potato plants to freeze to death in an instant. Its atmosphere is not as thick, too, approximately 1 90th as dense as Earth, and its sunlight, at maximum intensity, is around 43% the magnitude of Earth's. On the bright side, beneficial carbon dioxide and nitrogen make up 95% and 2.6% of the Earth's atmosphere respectively, yet the same atmosphere atmosphere lacks ozone, meaning if crops are to be grown, the surrounding greenhouse windows must block out harmful solar ultraviolet radiation. There is no water on the surface of Mars, although there are scores present beneath its surface and in the planet's polar regions. In short, the environmental conditions make growing plants only possible in greenhouses that are heated and pressurized, with controlled amounts of humidity and water. Going back to the Villanova study, the students found that success rates were improved in two ways. First, by enhancing the amount of sunlight using multi-wavelength LEDs, and secondly, by loosening the dense soil present on Mars by adding either potting soil or earthworm feces. In spite of these measures, the conditions on Mars do not promote growing certain popular plants, such as tomatoes, beans, legumes, corn, or several root plants, such as carrots and potatoes, which typically come out stunted from the soil simulant. Dandelions would flourish on Mars, according to the Villanova students. Luckily, they contain significant benefits as a vegetable, as they grow quickly, contain all edible parts, and have high nutritional value. Other plants that could thrive on Mars are kale, onions, garlic, peas, microgreens, lettuce, arugula, and spinach. Based on the research that has been done so far, it appears possible that crops could be grown on the surface of Mars. In fact, one could even purchase NASA-endorsed regolith simulants and conduct your own experiments. The material mentioned above that mimics Martian soil, and the research that has been covered in the video today is only the tip of the iceberg. In determining how to successfully grow plants on Mars, there are no stupid potential solutions. Some of brainstormed how to get pollinators to Mars, or using purified human urine as a fertilizer, along with several other outlandish solutions for growing crops on the Red Planet. And one benefit of Mars's hostile environment is that it kills off all pathogens present in human waste that can be used as crop fertilizer by freeze-drying it, as Mark Watney surely understood. What do you think? With all the challenges we face on the road to colonizing Mars, how do you envision the first settlers farming on Mars? Let me know down below in the comments. And as always, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this every week.